Hello, hello. Hope everybody's doing well. We got Archangels versus Team X. Got to think X coming in. It's a big favorite. I'm Laser Jesus, joined by Maxi and Team X, fresh off of uh, the Operation King Win victory. We're expecting them to come out strong here on Overpass versus the primarily Swedish lineup. And already it's snappy. Getting the first frag at long, causing an immediate rotate from everybody from Archangels. But a split still might be thwarted here is fetched yeah that's two of them at long and then cut down from the short area as well archangels holding onto both long and short i think team x might have spread themselves a little thin and or thought the rotation was going to be different because everybody from archangels rotated from the ct area nobody electing to go for the flank and team x didn't immediately commit everybody into that bomb site but Madi, as well as his teammate snappy still up both a frag apiece so far on the round. Quick's quite wounded around by the truck, and now Team X thinks they're gonna go back to the B bombs, right? Or at least make it look like they are. Already snappy, clearing the stairs position. Maybe Quick's might catch a glimpse of Madi coming down the stairs. Not gonna be so. Snappy spotted at the B bomb site, but I think Team X are just gonna commit. Unlikely that they split 1 1 and try to sell a fake with just two guys left. Good spam onto the Heaven player, Downey. He's going to have to give up the plant location. And Snappy currently covering Graffiti. He takes down Zendi. Archangels can't lose this round. Off of, I think it was a four on two situation. Which now down to a two on two. And I might even give Team X the advantage. But Downey on to Mati. Leaving it up to Snappy. Downey is so wounded. Sticking the plant quick. No, he needs the headshot. And he's going to get it. What a crazy round. I got scared there at the end. Like, I saw Quix actually come for the short B flank. And then he kind of whiffed on whoever was in pit. Uh, but I mean, nonetheless, I think it was a good recovery from Archangels because they still started uh, 5v4 and then Quix got goosh instantly at the start of the round. I really like the strategy Team X round, which is pre pretty much it could just uh, long A explode. But whenever they, whenever they got that first pick, I felt like they should have maybe like set back a bit and be like, yo, guys, let's relax. They know we're four towards long. We're probably going to heavy rotate towards uh, towards A. Just relax a bit, see what's happening, and then re-execute. Instead, they kind of went for that really weird um, long A slash bathroom split. And because of those long A players going all the way through bathroom, it kind of delayed them, and Archangels had a good rotate onto the A side when that happened. Yeah, it was a bit odd, because... They didn't commit everybody, but they still went quickly. So you know the rotation's going to be immediate. A bit confused by that. And C-Max this round. Upgraded pistols. Trying to stay threatening to that economy of Archangels. Maybe even a little more. As they do get two frags, it's Glaive. And not even with the Deagle. He's got the P250 rocking out in the bomb site. But Archangels have made their way behind the bomb, which has been down at long. About to be a flanker coming up the stairs. The Team X are just going to sit on it, maybe wait for the rotate. It's Downey out at long, and he's looking the wrong way. Glaive has made his way all the way around. He's looking for the ace here. Oh, no. Uh, juggling that frag, but he does bring down Downey eventually. He's already got three, and he's going to need the ace now, but he does find himself a weapon. Fetch with a good peek right when Glaive tries to pull out that fallen M4. 2-0 for Archangels. I feel like it was just typical uh, eco rounds from uh, anti eco, sorry, from Archangels. It's just like they, they, I don't know where they could have lost that round, but still, Team X did a lot of damage. I actually took down three guys, so actually, it's not good for Archangels' economy. And I, I hope that right now, because they see Team X going in for a buy, and I feel like Team X buy isn't that bad. And when you look at Archangel buy, I mean, they have three guys with a lot of utilities, but then you have a guy with a UN, uh, UNP. And on Team X side, you have five AKs, but low on utilities. So it would be an interesting round, and Team X actually uh, needs to win this one. So I hope we're going to see maybe towards. Uh, feels like the A is the more favorable side for Team X on this map. So maybe we're going to see something like an A split. And yeah, Team X with the eco round have set themselves up nicely for the hard reset. As Archangel's economy, they got nothing there. So, Archangels lose. That's a double save. Team X probably just won. As up in the stairs, looking for the flank. Glaive puts away Dominate, though. He was the only guy not a part of either bomb site. He was way extended with no potential support. But I like the Archangels' reaction. They're not just going to sit in the 2 on 2. They're going to try to take the advantage back by grouping up at the A bomb site and committing what I think they're going to commit into the bathrooms area just to go for some hardcore aggression, force that player 
to come up with a multi-kill. Otherwise, he's going to be traded quite quickly. And Team X, they're just sitting on that opening frag, hoping that Archangels will overextend themselves. But I don't expect them to think that there's this many players in the bathroom area. Yeah, the next uh, next guys up have the flashbangs out, but still, Archangels, they've been exposed now. Just down to one player, and he'll fall. I like the reaction for Archangels, but Team X just shut it down. Yeah, Team X plays this round really well. I mean, at the end, we kind of knew that uh, going into that kind of buy, Team X was feeling a little bit confident because, yes, they got the bomb down on the first round, but it's not all the teams that actually forced by on the third round. Like, they, they still like to do so because it's really good. Because most of the time, if you do a decent amount of damage on that second round, you're going to be able to get a pretty decent buy going in. And then the opposite team's not going to have that many utilities. So you're basically going to come out of it ahead. And this is basically what happened there by Team X. And right now you see Archangels with uh, 3 Deagle, a 5-7, and a Scout. And the Scout's already, already down, so we should be looking at a 2-2. Two -two, and Archangel's going to need to save again. Yeah, they need to get some damage in here at the bare minimum on the force buy. So far, nothing. Team X not giving up any kills. And now Archangels will try to rotate. This seems to be their reaction whenever they give up the frags at the A-bomb site. Just over-rotate and completely commit onto A. But Team X, they're so patient in these scenarios when they get that opening kill that anything that Archangels really throws will be well scouted. Seems like they're doing a good job of that at least. And Mahdi, uh, looks like he was AFK for a moment, or at least didn't have anything to do at the opening part of the round, because he's way back in T-spawn, just waiting for the flank, just showing you how patient this Team X is, and he still has time to join the fray whenever he wants to. Know that window is closing, might want to go sooner rather than later, or he'll just commit to the flank for the entire round. Downey on Freaks out at long. Trade will be attempted in just a moment. Downey not going for the weapon, wants to post up and try to go for some more 1D. But he's full white. Good pop flash by T Max. Downey couldn't really react to it as Mahdi's still watching the flank. Two players left at the A bomb site. Fetched and Zendi. And with how long T Max has taken, they've still allotted themselves enough time to go all the way back to that B bomb site and get the bomb down with enough time to blast anybody away at that site. So Archangels on the force by maybe another kill or two. But that's the maximum they're going to be able to hope for. And Scout, maybe Zendi can grab this AK around the corner. But Snappy, just with one HP left, Zendi will finish him off. But either way, forced by unsuccessful for Archangel. And what I liked about this round from uh, Team X is you see that there's a couple of people, even Snappy was kind of low HP, but they, they didn't actually try to go in at the end and chase those tracks. They let those tracks come to them because they didn't want to take any risk. I mean, there's no reason for you to lose your AKs. And then you see right now, you see Snappy buying a Mac 10 because he knows they're saving, which, he, which uh, Snappy and Frisk are like, well, you know what? Let's try to build uh, a bank right now and go for those Mac 10s with the three AKs. And on Archangel's side, it's a full save, so... Should be looking at a pretty decent round again from Team X, but at the same time, it's a uh, anti-eco round, so it's pretty easy to win. But I feel like Team X on their T-side seems to have a better understanding of what Archangel is doing. And a lot of that, I think, is easy, easier because they always get that opening kill. So it, it, it's a lot easier to uh, dictate or feel out what the CTs are going to do when you uh, don't give up that opening kill. Exactly. So we'll see if that persists. Uh, Archangel, still no op potential, though, for them. No op, and I feel like at the same time an op on this map is kind of good. And what I like on that um, on that CD side especially is what SK does, and I think even G2 does it from time to time. And it's the aggressive kind of fun ten push, or even that aggressive short B push, and trying to get control of certain areas on the map. That way, as CT is giving is giving you a lot of intel to uh, where the T's are going. And it seems that uh, maybe the CT are trying to do that right now. Yeah, I love the fountain play too. Like, even if you don't get the frag and say what's happening now, you're both both sides are smoked out. Neither side really wants to commit. Say T Max goes fast towards B, the T side does. If you have a very fast flank too, so there's multiple layers to that aggression potential on the CT side. But they try it and they get crushed. So that's the downside of it when you go for those uh, aggressive plays on the CT side. If it doesn't work well, now we're in another situation where Team X just have that massive advantage, which they've already shown that they're quite strong at, not bleeding out any players once they get that opening kill. As Mahdi will do that. Trades there by Snappy, though. The bomb was spotted, but even so, I don't think Archangels have any chance of taking this round, even if they rotate right now. But it's the, that seems to be the problem for Archangels. They gave up that opening kill. They want to go for that aggression. 
problem is, if they don't get it, Team X, they're really good at just slowing down that pace and finishing from there. It just seems that this round there, what happened is, Archangels had the right idea. Archangels went for that aggressive front end. They tried to smoke the little stairs, and basically it fell. They missed their smoke, there was a huge gap in it, and Team X counter flashed that. So it actually delayed Archangel's boost, and whenever you do that type of uh, a smoke at the stairs, the T's need to know. I mean, if you're doing a smoke there, that means you're trying to do something aggressive. And Glaive was already post up in a corner, winning for those two guys to boost because the boost was delayed. Got a free kill, so the other guy just trying to go towards uh, the blue room, so the door room, and just killed him. And it just seems that whenever... Uh, Archangels did their smoke and they got flashed and they saw that they were gonna get delayed for multiple seconds They, sh they should have just like aborted that strat and be like, okay guys, don't do anything. Just fall back Still, like we can still play aggressive towards the bathroom or just retake the, the door stairs control But don't go for that kind of peak because they're gonna be expecting it instead They still went for it and they were already down to a 3v5 within not even like 15 seconds uh, in the round It's pretty much lost from there and they couldn't even bring any weapons into this next one. Team X doing a fantastic job across the board on the T side. And they really don't have to switch anything up. If they play slowly, slowly take control of that bathroom's area while maintaining control of outside B, it seems that Archangels are unable to contest that, even with some aggression. So if they're forced to go stagnantly and then not aggress anything, which is always a bad pit to fall in on the CT side, I, I fear it's going to be the same result for the primarily Swedish side. And anybody pushing towards the B side. Mahdi's really creative with the way he's holding outside of B. Now he's behind a dumpster before he was way back behind the car and spawn. Anybody pushing over there for Archangels will have a bad time. And another spot. What do you know? Team X have the opening kill once more. And now it's going to be a very slow round as they slowly collapse onto this B bomb site. Will they be able to run through the stack though? And everybody from Archangels is here. But the pace of Team X moving in, it's not like they're going to allow too many easy kills. As I say that, Dominate gets one, and then his teammate gets a nice damage onto Snappy. Dinks him in the face down to 18. But slowly clearing that bomb set is Team X not committing too quickly. And now they're just going to charge in and finish off the last player, Downey. Who's having himself a, a nice little last stand. Either way, that's 5-2 to two for Team X. I mean, just there... Another good round by Team X. Uh, Archangels actually did the uh, yeah, well, I mean, stack. The only Archangel stack is whenever you stack a bomb site. The key to stacking, or at least in my opinion, the key to stacking is you want to get those crossfire going. Which means that if you're playing barrel, then you want to have people supporting you. If you die barrel without any like repeat from your team or even trades i mean to me it's bad like otherwise that means your your crossfire are not good there's something wrong someone's blind and this is basically what happened at b they executed towards b they got a bigger barrel then those guys weren't playing really crossfire at this site. team x is busting into the b bomb site it's a play i didn't think they had to make but inside the smoke lurking oh quick's going for a crazy play Lurking inside the smoke, tries to make his way out and kill the planter. Might have wanted to go for a different target instead of the planter. But I don't even think Team X really necessarily had to do a strat like this because uh, they were winning in general just by opening up their default. But it is a nice switch of the pace. Going for the fast B. Force Archangels to, you know, keep thinking that it's, it's possible that the rush could be coming. And everything's working for Team X. 6 to 2. Archangels just struggling on this CT side. Exactly, right now everything's working for Team X, and like you said, it's it's nice to have that change of pace, right? You want to show them, well, we can work pretty slow, just picking you guys like apart one by one, or we can just like straight up rush in your faces and kill you. So it doesn't matter. Like when you're Archangels, you're like, well, okay, guys. Like when they're playing slow, you're like, well, guys, don't give them too many space. Why don't you straight up rushing you, and you cannot even kill them on a full buy on your team's part. You're like, okay, well, I mean, there's issues going on, and we we need to try to fix them. I'm kind of impressed that we haven't seen Archangels really take a timeout yet or something. I feel like it could be something they could discuss about. Maybe they believe they have a really really good T side, and that's one of the reason, or they're still waiting for one more like. The next gun round, and if they lose that next gun round, they're going to take it. But I just feel like nothing is working on uh, Archangel CT side so far, and it just seems that either it's Team X being insanely good, 
are just archangels completely like not playing to their normal status. Yeah, I'm not sure what it is. And Glaive's playing out of his mind right now. 14 and 5. But yeah, the timeout, I think it's necessary after they lose this next gun round. If they lose, I'm already counting it as a as a lost team. X just playing so well. But what did they really discuss? What what can you really do on the CT side? Because everything seems to be working for Team X. They just rushed B on the last gun round. Completely ran over Archangels. The slow stuff working out for Team X as well. Because whenever Archangels go for that aggression, they get they give up the opening frag. So and you don't you never want to just play completely locked down inside of that A bomb site and give all the real estate over to the T side. So it's it's kind of a damned if you do, damned if you don't go for Archangels because the aggression gets stopped and. You know, they, they just got rushed at B, so it's, it's hard to predict what Team X are really going to do with this next one. But as I'm talking over all this, Archangels have a chance of winning this round. And it's now gone. Or is it? I don't think he has a kit, though. Zendi. No, he doesn't have a kit. And playing this so smart is snappy. He might die with the bomb, but still, round one. Crisis averted. Still a good round for Archangels, though. Good round by uh, Archangels. I mean, you still got those frags at the end. Obviously, it's good because you, uh... You cannot hurt Team X economy because you're gonna, they're gonna have to rebuy those AKs. But still, at the end, if you look at their bank, I mean, three of them were maxed out on 16k, so it's not looking too bad. Um, the only issue I have right now with Archangels is um, under CT side. It seems that like right now there's gonna be an op on Dunning. That's really what I like to see. I like to see that op. He had it the round where they straight up rush B, but. I want to see him on a round where Team X is kind of not doing fast, just doing their normal slow work and see if Donnie can actually try to get those opening picks. And if he can actually get that pick like towards long A or towards bathroom and then kind of move around with his op, that's, what, that's where we're going to see if it's actually the just Team X being the way better team or if it just Archangels needed that op on Donnie to kind of make those moves. Because sometimes it's what you need, you need to have an op where just opening um, the map on certain areas to actually give your CTs a lot, a lot of space to work with. I agree, and it's a good spot to go aggressive here, or passive too, but then it comes down to predicting where the T's are going to move, because where we're at now, Downey had been peeking the long area, now he's given it up and he's gone behind the truck by bank. And it's a very slow peek attempted here, a very tricky one by Freeze too. I think they're slowly going to creep around this corner, ooh, I don't know about that one! Both oppers! Not going to get the kill, however, Downey does get the leg off of Freeze. But this is a position I don't really like for the CT side. When you completely give up all that bathroom area, it allows your, the T side to really keep you in the dark before the execution comes. And I think it's going to be a commitment into this A bomb site. Dominate is in a cheeky position around the corner, and he's going to finish off Snappy Glaive. Full white and jumping still gets the kill, and then Glaive follows it up. This is the problem with giving all that real estate to the T side. You really got to contest that bathroom area, but Downey's still up. And now down, Valdi coming around. So one man left at Zendi, and yeah, he's just going to have to get out of here. I don't think he has a chance in this one on three. Well, two two players are quite low. We got Madi as well as Freeze, and Zendi's running out of time. He's got to make his move with this last little piece of utility. On to Valdi, shut down. That's 8-2 for Team X, and I think Archangels, based upon their passive player, they're just out of, they're just out of ideas. Out of ideas, and right now, that's where I said I would have liked to see Archangels take that that uh, timeout and be like, Let, let's discuss about what's going on, instead of not really doing it. Uh, which is, I mean, it's surprising because everything that they're trying to do is not working, and I feel like sometimes this is what you need. You need that kind of stop, talk with your teammate, trying to see what's going on. Instead, you kind of get into this round with um. But a half kind of buy, I mean, it's still a pretty decent one. But I just feel like right now, they're just, like, you're trying to push long A, and it, I don't know, it seems like they're just coming to suicide. There's no flashes. It, it doesn't seem, like, really coordinated. It's kind, of, it's kind of like a little bit of pugging to me that Archangel is doing to try to, like, you know, make some impacts in this game. Yeah. it's. I think they're at a point where if, if you can't figure out why what you've prepared isn't working and have a definitive answer uh, to fix it, then I think that's when you got to get crazy because the score is already 8-2. to two. I think you save until you get downy that op and let your opper try to take over. Something like that. And yeah, you, your aggressive pushes aren't working, but neither is the passive stuff. So, I mean, you got to get really creative in this scenario. And of course, a timeout helps that. And this kind of spot is, I think if you're getting shut down by this much, it allows you to play a little looser because you're already losing, right? Exactly. You're already losing. So you need to try to 
to try to find a solution and if that solution is to kind of push and try to pick them one by one apart I mean it's 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 always something because sometimes you need you need to play unexpectedly like you need to try to do something that's a really dumb move that you should never do but it works the Stewie and 2K style. Exactly, like the Stewie 2K flash in the smoke thing. Like it's, it's. I mean, now it's more expected, but back in the day, nobody would have expected someone to just straight up just walk in the smoke or just flash through the smoke and push it. People were like, if you do that, you're dumb. But now it's like more of a new meta where, I mean, you need to use that flash and smoke combo, and it's really powerful. T Max going back to B. I think this is actually good for Archangels though, <laughs> that Team X don't go for the slow play. And they give Archangels a chance to hold this B rush and they're doing a good job of that. I think next round we'll still go back to Team X and maybe even this one though. Free still up and the peaks are not good. The team play is not good from Archangels here. They gotta double up on this last peak, otherwise Free might have himself a huge clutch and they're peaking one by one. Downy, close angle, but Freeze is posted up as well. And Freeze gonna miss this one on the retreat. I don't think he can get out of here in time. Downy expecting the op to be posted up. Doesn't full commit to the peak. Flashbang around the pillar, but that's gotta be a big flashbang. Freeze will miss the next one. But I don't think Downy has enough time without a kit. Might get out of there with the op. The team X even. somehow scrape that. Hey, okay, at least he got an M4. I thought he was, uh... He actually dropped his gun to pick up the AWP, but didn't pick it up. And then he realized it and tried to go back for the AWP, but he couldn't find it, so he got the M4. Yeah, right now I just don't understand what Archangel is doing. It seems that everything that Team X is doing just completely working. And if we take that in, into uh, into consideration, the only two rounds that Archangels won are the pistol and the NT Eco after that. They haven't, lo they haven't won a round after that. So that means every gun round so far, they haven't won any of them. And it just seems that they're really out pirate. Like the firepower on Team X seems to be way better than on Archangel so far. Oh and right God. now you see even Donnie missed that shot. Like it was a crucial shot. Like that's the type of thing that you need to hit. That's maybe the the kind of room that uh, Archangels was looking to work with, right? You hit that shot. It's a five v four for your team. You can try to reset, maybe get aggro somewhere else. And have, have we ever that. seen a five v four? For Archangel, I think they've never gotten the opening frag on the, on the, the slower rounds. Probably on the eco round. I mean, the anti eco, yeah. the second round. And I just, I gotta say, I don't like the way Downey's playing with this op. He, he needed to hit that first shot, obviously. But then, you're already down this far, and playing passive is not working. Try to take over. Because that op is a weapon that you can get a clean entry and get out of there at the opening rounds. But, I don't know if it's lack of confidence, if they are already, already feel de defeated. I've seen Downey make plays like that before. I mean that that's that's where you gotta just take over with uh, you're the only player that's using that specific weapon that can do that so you gotta make the play happen or force it to happen because you're already losing by such a large margin, which will be furthered. Eleven for Team X. Is Andy just gonna save this one? And I think when you're down this much in this sort of half, the objective is no longer let's have a good half. The objective is let's give ourselves a chance in the next half. And exactly. Our Angels is not even doing that. I agree with you. I agree with you completely there. I felt like Downey wasn't a good spot at the start. He actually missed that shot towards the guy, uh, I mean, the bunch of guys rushing going A. But after that, he went towards Truck. I have no issue with Truck. But I don't think Truck is a good spot to be at with an AWP. I feel it's a good spot to be at with a rifle or any other gun than an AWP. And the reason is because you simply get mollied. And when you get mollied out of that spot with an op, that means you need to unscope and move. And if you need to unscope and move, most likely there's going to be a big chance that people are going to be running at you and you're going to die. Instead, when you have an M4 and you just run, I mean, it's easier to shoot with an M4 because of, like, everybody knows why. But I just feel like right now, Downey's not making good decision. <laughs> yeah, now he's got a scout. Maybe that's the ticket. As Quick tries to make his escape out the stairs. Nope, gonna go back down. Archangels did double up at the tunnels area. And Quick's maybe one more. Veldi with a nice peek, but the smoke might have been favoring Quick's in that situation. So we do have an advantage for the Archangels on a round where Team X did not rush B. So this is a first, gotta say. Very late. And four for Archangels. They gotta have a hell of a T side. I don't see Team X giving up the same amount of rounds. Quick's. Throwing himself at Freeze, giving away the advantage. Didn't have to continue that fight, but he thought he had the advantage. Little did he know, there was a Tech-9 on the side of Freeze. That was the end of that.
Archangels now at the three on three. We'll see where they want to place that second guy. T Max is keeping them in the dark, at least in this three on three. As Archangels have two players at the A side, one at long, one kind of joining him at long, now rotating at the CT spot. I love the, the silent play of T Max, though, giving Archangels nothing to pre rotate off of. Force them to guess where they want that second player to be. This Downey seems to have a hunch that it's B. Nope, going back to A. Really needed to commit to that rotate. Zendi forced off of the barrel's position. Botch flashbang by Glaive. We'll see if Downey can hit this headshot, though. He's going to need to as the smoke goes up. Glaive, one frag away from that 20 bomb. Likely going to complete it here. He knows the player's at the water. And the nade work by T Max is really good. Wow, Glaive catches him right around the corner of Graffiti. There's a smoke up and everything. I think he was intentionally left, uh, left a gap there. As a scout, still trying to stay relevant in this round. He's getting no peaks from the heaven, though, so he's going to have to get in close range with the scout. Not something you want to do. Freeze. Looking to finish things off here. 12-2 so to two for Team X. And Archangels, they had the advantage, but uh, their minds have been lost. They just continued up the ladder. What I liked about Team X there is the discipline that they have. Yes, they're basically straight up giving them like the beat down of their life almost but like even when they get the bomb down they play the, those pulse plan really smart like they don't take any rest they don't rush into them like they have a lot of rounds to work with i mean they're already up like worst case scenario there they would have been up 11 4 and i just feel like you see frizz playing towards the long b with the all post up on whoever would cross the barrel those two guys are playing at cat just really passive and they're not just trying to rush an Archangel's face and trying to kill them. Instead, they're playing that like proper CS, and that's what I like. I like to see a team that even though they're stomping the opposite team, they just play disciplined CS, and they're like, you know what, guys, we're not going to give you any room to work with. We're not going to make any mistakes. You guys need to come to us. We're the team to beat right now, and if you guys make those... Are you playing the way you're playing right now? You're not going to beat us. And the only time I think they've deviated from that... A very disciplined play is strategically because I don't think they ever had to go fast B but you're already up by this much and you might as well get some live practice in with it right it's, it's not like uh, Archangels have that large of a chance to come back in this based upon the way the entry frags have been going and uh, the discipline you highlighted it is, is really cool to see because when you're when you're winning by this much it's so easy to just you know get messy and try to just pug them and go crazy with the aim I like what I'm seeing from Team X, but this round, Archangels have gotten themselves the advantage once more. Can they find a way to lose it, though? <laughs> As Team X creeping into the bathrooms with Freeze. Oh, saw the hand of Fetched. Pop Flash, not good. Fetch better not peek into the bathrooms, though. And is it going to happen again? It's looking like it because Freeze knows exactly where Fetched is. And he wants to go get the bomb, it seems, though. Maudie might come up the stairs and cause a distraction. They don't have much, of a, much time to utilize this play, though. Freeze with the drive-by. Fetch gets the better end of that, but he does spot the bomb going back to B. If Zendi can just stall for about seven seconds, he might be able to do this. No. Into the bomb site is Freeze with the bomb. Quite wounded. What? Fetch burns to the molly? Where was that from? Looks like he got him trying to exit the stairs or something. As Zendi caught a glimpse of Freeze, but not enough time to bring him down. Spam. Yes, he completes it. Somehow through the smoke and a piece of the wood, I do believe. Mahdi... Rotates from the monster to short, however, and now he's going to creep in the smoke. This is a tricky play, and he's ready inside the smoke. T-Max, come back from another 2v3 situation. And right now, like, Archangels must be, like, kicking themselves. Like, they were in such a good spot to at least win this last round, and maybe he's starting a good foot on the uh, T side. Instead, I just I think it was a 4v2. You just lose that 4v2, and you see uh, Mahdi and Shut Up Frisk playing that. I'm not going to say the perfection, but they just played together. And what happened on Team uh, on Archangels, they were just playing one by one by one, and you're just giving them basically 2v1 fights all over the place. Or even 1v1 fights, and you're seeing that Arch uh, I mean, Archangels 1v1 so far hasn't been up to the normal standard. They they're not able to get those 1v1s. And like Mahdi almost won all his duels, Friss is winning a lot of his duels as well. And you're just going one, one against one against them, but most likely you're going to die. And then it goes from a, two, uh, a 4v2 to a 2v2. And then at the end it just, you know, the Archangels need to be playing 1-1 or just both together. Instead they go for that 1-1. 
T-Mag just spawn somewhere with uh, with two guys, so it's a 2v1, and then they just win. The B split is on for pistol round, getting rushed down as the player at Graffiti. Well, he needs some support, not gonna get it. So Archangels, they probably gonna take pistol round here unless they can find a way to drop this one. This is a hard one to fumble. I gotta say, Snappy though. He's making it happen. That's two. Mahdi can't escape out the heavens. And now Fetch will peek out from the short. Looking for the head of Snappy. Who's been looking really strong on this pistol. Down to Freeze. Doesn't have his op. Looking to get him down on the short. Taps away, Dominate. Don't let it happen. And Fetch will have himself a nice pistol round with two. So Archangels, very simple B-Rush. And something that's hard to hold. I must say, there's at least one thing going for Archangel so far in this match, and those are pistol rounds. Right? I mean, other than that, I mean, I just hope that right now we can see them kind of get that momentum going. So it was a straight up B rush, really nice. I really like to see that kind of style. It just seems that they're just outpowered them, outshot them, and this is something we haven't seen from Archangels on the CT side. I just felt like it was Team X doing that to them. And if we yeah. see them right now kind of going for those kind of plays, I mean, maybe we could be looking at a closer match than what we think. Yeah, I like that you didn't say comeback. <laughs> you said a closer match. Uh, so I still don't think, even even if Archangels have themselves a, a big opening for the second half, T-Max, I think we'll actually see the pause come out if they're struggling, unlike the Archangel side. But who, yeah, who knows? Maybe if they can keep the gas up here. Maybe these entry frags can just carry them all the way, but we, I, I just don't see Team X struggling the way Archangels did, especially with the op play coming out. I think we'll see a little more confidence, a little more aggression come out when it, uh, when it arrives. You see Freeze, the man, saving up for it. I agree with you. I think that right now it's basically Archangel is kind of trying to get those uh, two uh, NT Eco rounds over with. They just won B three rounds in a row. And after that, it's going to be a real buy from Team X, and it's going to be the real fight for uh, Archangels and see if they can actually hang. So towards B so far, Team X not getting themselves many eco frags. Very quick one. Archangels is straight into the B bomb site. Now we get some answers. Freaks. First round is it going to be aggressive with the op? And I like that kind of save from the opper because now it's a common thing that on the second round you go for that pistol light armor or even pistol head armor and then you full save the next one so you get a M4 buy. But instead what the opper does now is they just fully save or just buy a P215 and fully save and you can actually buy an op. And that it's something that I like. I like to see that op play instantly into the, the fourth round. I feel like it's really good on the CT side. Archangels are trying to keep up this pressure though. This has been what's working. This is a very fast play, but the counter flashes are good from Team X. Two for two so far. Inside of the smoke above the bomb site, Glaive. Seems to be pretty common throughout this match. Is that lurk inside the smoke, except Glaive does not go for the planter. Instead, he goes for the frag. Something Archangels didn't do when they attempted that play. And Team X, guns come out and they take the round. There's a good round there from Team X. It felt like when I saw Archangels actually going towards B again, I was like, oh, maybe we're going to see basically what they did the, the past three rounds, which is an instant like plow into the B bomb side where just hit all their shots. And it started pretty good because Dominate actually got that frag on the guy barrel. But then from there, the guy from Short B just flashed him, killed one, and Team X kind of went for those trait frags. And it seemed that that 3v3 was really hard when Glaive actually made this 2v2 cane to smoke. Killed the guy with the UMP, picked up the AK, killed the second guy. And right now it just feels that like Archangel has such it's, it's such a long road away from the win. <laughs> that I don't know if they gave up, but I hope they didn't. But I just see it just seems that they're not gonna be able to figure out Team X CT side. Right. Take a stairway to heaven at this point. Lamau. Right. I'm liking the way Freeze already with the op. Right away, op comes out, he's already peeking down into the fountain. Both these gun rounds right away. So if Archangels want to contest that, you know, Freeze is going to be there. But Quicks solo into the P-bomb site. Goes one for one. At least the trade's there for Team X. But where's the follow-up from that? Was that a scouting play from Archangels? As I think when you commit that guy, even if, even if you... Uh, get traded off there has to be some sort of reaction like well i'm not sure what the point of it is yeah you got the frag but usually there's something else afterwards there's usually intent behind it and it's a risky play because if he doesn't give up that if he doesn't get that entry well then he's solo there no trade potential and then you give up a frag gotta say even though it was successful from archangels i don't like it 
Now from Quicks. We'll go back towards the B side now. Melody spammed away through the wall. Nope, not through the wall by Downey. So Madi in a pretty bad spot here. Rotation gonna take a while to get there in Archangels. They have taken the B bomb site, the Freeze. Trying to spam one down. The head right on him. Right on point. Yeah, that, that box is weird. I don't know, that wood. I don't know what it's made out of. Definitely not birch. Snappy coming in up the stairs or coming down the stairs. Uh, yeah, I think they'll give this one up. No need for Team X to go for this here. Maybe keep it expensive. Freeze will still stay posted up. But Archangels, they just entry frag their way into B, but I still don't I still don't agree with the opening part of the round. Um I was kinda confused because like you said, right, when you you have someone kinda lurking towards B alone and he gets a frag, what do you expect from the from your team is to be making a move on another part of the map? Which is a like because that guy is kinda being using himself as a decoy. He's like, I'm gonna make some noise at B, I'm gonna try to do something, and when you do that Sometimes this is when the CTs try to rotate because they're seeing one of their teammate dies. And especially since that guy that died was kind of surprised because he didn't really expect that. And then he got traded. So normally you would have like a guy instantly trying to rotate towards B. And then if you're uh, on your T side, you're actually making it right. It's basically playing chess, right? You're going to be making that move and your other team is going to be making that move trying to get that rotator or something. Instead, it seems like they just let that guy kind of ramble into the side, die, and just give him give them intel I'm like okay there's one more guy B and then from there it was complete dark from both sides and Archangel just decided to go B I don't keep highlighting it the way Freeze peeks into the fountain area is very safe like you have to wide there's no way he's gonna get counter sniped there and he still gets the info of anybody crossing into the playground so not as aggressive as you can be or as impactful as you can be there but impact in different ways because that's a lot of intel if he spots two people crossing into the playground that pretty much means it's not going to be a fast B by any means so at least playing the intel game with that AWP now he's posted up at the long area Archangels are slowly converging on the bathroom area while still maintaining control outside of B so Team X a little more passive than I anticipated but maybe they can make this look work they are doubled up at the long freeze ready for the boost play interesting work with the op not even playing a standard peak instead preempting the op angle to come out from downey but downey's coming up from short with nobody peeking the short area for team x we'll see how aggressive team or archangels get up into there and if they can make anything of it archangels will just quickly rotate back to the b side though not a big fake sold by any means so the rotation will be there for Team X currently with three at the bomb site. Now the commitment comes. Archangel's entry will be tested once more. Glaive pushes into our down short. Blast away one. Gets traded off, but then Snappy's there for the trade. Everybody from Archangels, they gotta get these entries now because they haven't allowed themselves enough time as Zendi surrounded in the bomb site. That should be that. 15 for Team X. I'll be honest, I don't really know how Archangel is kind of feeling after that round. I mean, Team X had, if I remember correctly, a really bad force buy. I mean, obviously they saved those two guns, but then after that, I think they had a Famas. They had maybe one UMP and one guy that went either Famas or like M4, but with really low utilities. And still, like Archangels, just it just feels like they're they're not trying to do anything on the map and just straight up rushing somewhere with no info and it just kind of rush into uh, Team X kind of stacks. Yeah, it's funny because it, it's it's been what's working the best. <laughs> um, uh, Archangels, one more time into B, and it's working. But they need nine more rounds. That's a long way, but it's possible. I just don't see them playing th this style being consistent. Is the problem when you just uh, you're you're rushing into B like this? Eventually, Team X will come up with a hold, maybe, probably. As Archangels just looking to hold, maybe Freeze will stay with this op. They don't have the greatest of utility set and or HP positioning to go for this retake but they got a lot of rounds to play with and they might just want to move on to the next one sooner rather than later quicks with some good spam that uh, doesn't hit anybody though almost on point it's snappy I don't think he'll be allowed to rotate he's gonna have to smoke himself out of there you definitely can't survive back there with 50 HP unless I'm wrong I guess he's gonna go for it can you survive here max no no you cannot that's the answer. It is. Felt like I don't. I just don't understand. It seems like whenever Archangel's kind of rushing beyond those rounds that they're supposed to lose, it seems that they're winning it. 
And every time they're kind of rushing it on the round that they're supposed to win, they're losing it. And right now, if you look at uh, Team X, I mean, they're still going to go into that weird buy like they had two rounds ago. And most likely, they're going to win it because it seems to be the way or the tendencies that's been happening in this match. But for once, it's I think it's the first time we've seen Archangels not go towards me. And Team X, they need to get the opening kill. That's Freeze followed up by Snappy in the stairs. I think Freeze went a little bit further that time unless Downey actually tried to counterpick the angle that Freeze was playing because that is not going to happen. It's, it's so precise and so safe from the CT vantage. Archangels with three remaining. Why not go back to B and just try to entry your way in there? Problem is this time they don't have enough players to trade with, but they're going to try their luck anyway. This is what's been working, and yeah, they don't go B, and they lose the round. It sounds counterintuitive, but uh, it's, it's, been, it's been what's working for Archangels. Veldy looking for the timing. Pete, Sandy will peek into him. Quicks, no trade right away. Veldy will get traded off, but still another player up on the barrels. And spamming away just down to dominate. And I think map one coming to a close. Wait a minute. No, Freeze not going to miss that one. 16 to 7 for Team X. I just don't know what to say there. I just felt like Archangels was never really able to get their CT uh, their CT side going. And it's kind of one, one of the reasons why I feel like they lost this match. I feel like their T side from Archangels wasn't that bad. I felt like they had a good money control. But at the same time... I'm pretty sure on their side, they feel like they had so much to actually come back. Like they were down like basically 13 to 2 and then they won that pistol. So, I mean, it's a huge comeback to make. But instead, they, they were never really able to get into the game. If they got like 7 rounds on their CT side or even 6, it would have been more doable. I mean, I felt yeah. like that, that T side from them, we saw them at least get 5 rounds. But Team X only needed three, so they they never Archangel was never really able to show us what they were worth on their T side, and it felt like they had a pretty solid T side. But yeah, their the CT side was yeah, but their CT side was complete like horrendous. It was like hard to watch. They didn't do anything. <laughs> they just got picked apart one by one by one. Just felt like Team X was like straight up playing against like a team that was uh that was not even of their caliber, and I just hope that. The Archangels that we saw on these side is the Archangels going to show up on that second map. Yeah, I feel like their default was just executed so well, be that the fault of Archangels or not. It looked like they were dry running at points of uh, the map. We are on to Mirage, though, which is Archangels' choice. We'll see if Team X can hold on, make this a 2-0 victory, or if Archangels can keep it close, possibly a 1-1. We'll be back for Mirage. Stay tuned. 